I'm Alexander Lukashuk, Director of the RFERL Belarus Service, and this is the briefing on Belarus's parliamentary elections. Belarus's parliamentary elections were not democratic. This is the essence of the verdict uh, that uh, international observers represented by the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe made. In 35% of cases, international observers could not meaningfully observe counter votes. There were cases of fraud and uh, falsification. Altogether, uh, 263 candidates ran for 110 seats. Among them, 70 members of the opposition. None of them made it. Why? This campaign was uh, quite unusual in terms of campaigning. The most significant sound of it was silence. There was no meaningful coverage on state radio, TV, in newspapers. One of the most unusual traits of these elections was early voting. About 26% of voters, national record, decided to cast their ballots a week before the elections. Most of them were state workers, teachers, students, and they were strongly pushed to come and vote early. No international observers were present when those votes were cast. Alexander Lukashenko promised that opposition members would make it to the parliament. It didn't happen. And it didn't happen for the same reason it could have, because it depended on Lukashenko's goodwill and he changed his mind. The major issue of these elections for Lukashenko and for their position was whether the West would recognize these elections. Lukashenko had a dilemma whether to start rapprochement with the West or to continue self-isolation. The regime needs the West, its resources, its goodwill, its economic, financial, political assistance. He made a couple of steps forward. All political prisoners in Belarus were freed in August. International observers were invited into the country. Lukashenko hoped that international observers, Europe, would accept these elections the way they were conducted. He miscalculated. Economic and social model of Lukashenko's regime um, is unsustainable. It depends on Russia. Its current budget deficit is growing by 30% every quarter. Still, any major political change is unlikely in the next two years. This time around, there was no revolution in Belarus. Voters did not care much about elections to the powerless body. However, in two years, it may be different. In 2010, the Belarus will stage presidential elections. And it is up to independent media, NGOs, political parties, opposition, supporters of democracy in the West, to keep that window of opportunity open. I am Alexander Lukashuk, director of the Belarus Service of RFERL, and this was the briefing on Belarus's parliamentary elections.